Data of every description will pervade our consciousness. Holograms projected beneath our eyelids. Direct retinal stimulation. Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi, and welcome back at the museum. Today, we're gonna to do a video about the prototypes of DCC. These prototypes were given to us by Gijs Wiertz mostly, and they all have a sticker called TROT9 on them. They play, they have audio, but they have the original felt pads, meaning those were the felt pads from the very first generation, and they used the regular felt pads that was also used previously in regular analog cassettes. Later, they moved on to a different type of mechanism to hold the felt pads, but also different felt pads. And since this is the first generation, none of these are really playable. They have a lot of dropouts. So in this video, we're gonna try and actually restore one of these. The Jimi Hendrix one we have in a later edition. So that actually has an upgraded felt pad and works. We're gonna open this tape up, see what's inside and see if we somehow can upgrade the felt pad mechanism to see if this tape would then play in a more stable way. The problem with these prototypes titles and felt pads is that they suffer from the stick slip effect shown in the previous video and the mechanism holding the pad is not guiding the tape the best possible way. We also think there might not be any side felt pads on these older tapes. This was a problem from day one for Philips, but they used these for demonstration purposes. Especially in the beginning of a tape, it might sound fine, but as the tape progresses, the dropouts occur frequently. Let's open the tape and see what's inside. First, we remove the plastic top cover. Now we can remove carefully the metal slider and spring like shown in a previous video. One of the engineers working at the DCC factory, Sander Clark, has taught us how to open a DCC pre-recorded or recordable tape by taking it in both hands and firmly moving back and forth. Unfortunately, this did not go well with this early prototype as the shell cracked. After so many tapes, this had never happened and the material used in these early prototypes are very fragile. Nothing we can fix as the artworks will eventually cover this crack. We think there is plenty of room to insert the later version of the felt pad. Clearly the side felt pads are missing in this version. Here is the inside of a later model used on all pre-recorded titles with side felt pads and a different bracket and main felt pad. As we want to keep the tape as original as possible, we start by just replacing the main felt pad and see if that will solve the problem. Otherwise, we would have to transplant the entire tape into this new shell with side felt pads, as the side felt pads can be moved over into this old shell. 
we used a pre-recorded title that was broken as a donor for the new felt pad mechanism. Before we glue it all back together, we test it first and apply some masking tape. And there we have it, a full restore tape. Do I regret taking this on? Well, I didn't anticipate the tape breaking. We have done many of those where we open up cases and uh, replace tapes and sliders, etc., etc., in the restoration process, but never one that was like early 91 or late 91. So apparently that material is a little bit more brittle, so we have to be careful in doing that. The mission was a success though, it's playing beautifully, so that is a good step forward. Thanks for watching, see you next time.